Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Siguain. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about consistency. So this is a question uh, that I get often. I know I say this often because I get a lot of questions every day because <laughs> I'm a coach. Um, but a lot of people struggle with consistency. And so today I wanted to address that, how I personally deal with it and some insights that might be helpful um, into you making that little mindset shift that would allow you to show up consistently. So I think the most important thing to start off with is to understand that consistency doesn't mean perfection. A lot of the times we think that uh, I can't show up consistently and for us, like I can't show up perfectly every time I want to show up, right? We all have the ability to show up every day. It's just we feel like we have to feel 100% in order to show up and do the thing. But realistically, you're not going to feel 100% every single day. And so consistency doesn't equal perfection. Consistency is simply the act of you showing up regardless if you feel 10%, 30%, 70%, or 100%. One of my favorite saying to my members is that consistency compounds. If you want to look from the aspect of money, if you have 10% interest on your money, that stuff is going to compound over the years. If you had 100% interest on your money, that'd be a great deal. I would let me know where you can find that. But if you have 0% on your money, your money is not going to grow. There's no way for this money to grow. It's the same thing for you and the goal that you're after. If you don't show up, right? If you show up, don't show up, which would be the equivalent of 0%, we can't compound 0%. We can compound 1%, 2%, 10%, 30, 50, 70, 100, but we can't for zero. And so simply making that little mindset shift that consistency doesn't mean perfection. It simply means stepping into the room, stepping into the action that you're supposed to do for your goal. And that is showing up. That is the beginning of consistency, right? So the other thing I have for you here, I made a little notes because this is such an important topic. Um, I want you to start showing up even if you feel 10%, even if you feel 20%, even if you don't know what you're doing, just show up, right? There's no way for you to learn and improve if you don't show up. And I promise you, as you show up for your first workouts, as you show up for your first meal prep and your kitchen's a mess and there's food everywhere and it takes you four hours the first time, you're like, oh my God, I can't do this every single Sunday. I promise you things are going to get better. You're gonna develop system. You're gonna develop little tricks for yourself and you'll learn to make less of a mess and make it faster and more efficient. So what we want by you showing up, even if you don't know what you're doing, even if you don't feel like it, is for you to start stacking small wins. Right. Because like I mentioned, consistency compounds and what compounds is those small wins that you're going to acquire every time you show up. So if the small win is like, cool, it take me four hours. It took me four hours to meal prep and my kitchen's a mess, but my food's ready for the week. And so that week, something's going to come up because life is the way that it is. There's going to be an emergency or whatever. And normally you'd have been stuck without food and you would have have to go through the drive through now. You have your meals prep, so you can eat a healthy option. And I promise you, you'll feel a lot better after eating the food that you prep versus eating out, and it'll have saved you some money also. So you want to start stacking those wins. So that's why I want you to start showing up, even in the smallest of way, even if that is like when your alarm goes off in the morning, that you don't press snooze and go back to bed, right? Just you closing the alarm and getting up, that is a huge win. That is the first step to you showing up. Start stacking those wins. Start showing to yourself that you can get up when the alarm goes off, right? And with that is going to the gym first thing in the morning. If you don't feel like it and you're tired, show up anyways, right? I promise you're going to feel a lot better after you're done your workout. And at the beginning, if you want to, and we've given this this trick to, to our members, just start with the warm-up, right? Start with the warm-up, and after the warm-up, you don't feel like it, then stop. 
But once you get to the warm up and you're like, okay, let me just try the first exercise, do the first exercise. If you don't feel like it after the first exercise, cool, you can go back. At least you gave it a shot, right? But usually what starts to happen is you start to build momentum, you warm up, you feel good. You're like, oh, I'll just do the whole thing at this point, right? And we had some members share with us that like, that's all they did. They're like, I really don't want to be here today. Life's chaos. I'm tired. They did the warm up and then they just committed to their first exercise. And after first exercise, I'm just going to commit to the next one. I'm just going to commit to the next one. And next thing you know, they're done the whole training, right? So a lot of times when we say that we want to do something, we're looking at this massive Everest mountain and we're like, man, how am I going to get on top of there? We try in our mind, we try to do it in one step. Realistically, it takes a lot of steps in order for you to get to the top. And that's simply what consistency is, is you taking those little steps every single day until you get to the top of the mountain, which is you reaching the goal that you want to. So I want to share a few tactics with you that um, I've personally used that I am using that also has helped our members. One is, again, show up regardless of how you feel. Start by getting those small wins. You probably heard me talk often about motivation versus commitment. Motivation is very emotion based. So you're only going to do it when you feel motivated. Commitment is uh, more of an, an act. It has no connection to emotions. I am committed to this. Therefore, if I don't want to show up that day, well, I'm committed to the outcome. All right. I'm, I don't have to rely on the fact that like I feel good to do it in order to do it. Because if I only did things when I feel like doing it, I probably wouldn't have coached over 500 people. I probably wouldn't have started a coaching practice. I probably wouldn't be where I'm at in my life if I only did things when I wanted to do them. And so first step, start stacking those small wins. Second one is you need to build a very simple and efficient morning and nighttime routine. The reason why I say that is because when there's no structure, there's no freedom, right? Big fan of Jocko Willings. One of his saying is discipline equals freedom. When you can have that level of discipline in that routine, it allows you to start your day the right way and allows you to end your day the right way. And that way you have control over your day. What happens in between those two things, we can we can work on with mindset, but at least you have a little structure in the morning. So I can share mine. Feel free to build yours. I like to build mine that is non-dependent um, on material or gear or things like that that i can't have access to if i'm traveling so a lot of people do like red light therapy in the morning and they're gonna do like a i don't know what else they do in the morning but a lot of different things that require material equipment i'm not gonna travel with a massive red light for my full body right and so the only things that i do when i wake up in the morning is i wake up go to the bathroom i weigh myself i do my cold shower i make coffee for ivy and i and um, we meditate read a book come to my desk and I work. That is my morning routine. It's very simple, straightforward. Um, it allows me to do those little small non-negotiables that are important to me and allows me to get started right for the day. Taking the cold, the cold shower allows me to just like wake up my mind and just start my day with something hard because I never wanted to do it every single morning. And then um, meditation, I'll, uh, just aligning myself before today reading 10 pages because I always want to expand my mind and then I start working, right? You see very simple steps. And then at nighttime, uh, basically I have my alarm on my watch, just closing the alarm on my watch, going to take um, a shower, then just going straight to bed. Super simple, right? It doesn't have to be complex. You don't need to include like a 20 step of like journaling, meditation and, and all that, all those things. Like those things are great, but ultimately they take you so long and it's just such a huge commitment to do them that when you don't have the time, you just screw up the whole thing. I'd rather just keep it simple and efficient. That way I can, you can guarantee that you can get it done regardless of where you're at. So that would be the first thing is build a simple and efficient morning and nighttime routine that allows you to be in prime position in the morning. Um, the morning stuff, cold showers is the thing I like. And then reading while drinking my coffee in the morning. To me, I wanted to create a life where I could have like a million dollar morning. Like if I had a million dollars in a bank account, how would I want my morning to be? I don't know for you, but I just love sitting on the couch, or on the porch, drinking coffee, reading a book, taking my time. That is for me a million dollar morning. I was like, why would I wait to have that? I can do this now. And so that's why I implemented it in my morning routine. So third one is you want to schedule your non-negotiables in your week. So what I invite you to do is grab a blank calendar for the next week from Monday to Sunday. And then you're going to schedule in the non-negotiable, the things that are important to you and get allow you to move forward towards your goal and the things that you obviously can't get out of. So you're going to go in there and you're going to schedule your work. You're going to go in there and schedule your date night. If you have kids, times with your kids, you're going to go in there and schedule your commute time to go to work, right? We want to map out everything. 
And now you're going to go in there and schedule in your workouts, whether it's three, four, or five times a week, you're going to schedule those in. If you're going to a gym and you're not training from home, I want you to put workout at gym and I want you to put the driving time before if it takes you 30 minutes, 30 minute block, if not 15, 15 minute block, I literally want you to map out all of these non-negotiables and how long it takes you to get to those places. And then once that's in there, you'll see that you have some available spots left. That's when you scroll on your phone. That's when you do all the other things, right? And I also want you to put in your bedtime and wake up time, like the actual one that you want. Don't try to minimize the amount of sleep that you have per night simply because you want to stay up later to watch Netflix. I did a full podcast on like me time. If you're sacrificing your sleep, that's not me time. Sleep is me time. Watching Netflix is not the best me time that you could be spending in order for you to live your healthiest and your best life. So go in and schedule your week with your non-negotiables. That's the first thing that's going to make it, that's going to be the, a huge difference maker simply because now everything is scheduled in and you know you have time to do these things because you accounted for time in between, time driving there, um, and uh, you pro you're actually prioritizing the things that are important to you. All right. So, point number four is put systems in place to help you be consistent. So, what I mean by that is, the, co the most common one is a lot of people have a hard time shutting off Netflix at night or shutting off their phone at night. Personally, um, I don't like really like opening my phone <laughs> throughout the day. I'm actually like really bad at it. But nighttime for Netflix, um, you know, me and, my, me and my fiance, we watch Netflix at night. A lot of people have a hard time closing it. When my alarm, when my alarm goes off, and like I pretty much know it's time for me to go to bed. So I just start and, and get ready. But what I've had to do in the past when I didn't have that level of discipline now is I bought those little timers, you know, for the Christmas trees that you plug them in and you set the timer. So it turns on the light at a certain time and it shuts them off at a certain time. Plug your TV in there and then set it so it shuts off at the time that you want it to shut off so you can actually go to bed. Because realistically, I know how hard it is when it's nighttime and you're like, oh, I got to go to bed and reaching for the remote that's on the table and then like closing it. You're like, ah, just one more episode. And then next thing you know, you're like an hour or two hours later. So having that system in place to just automatically shut it off, it's a lot more work to reactivate. You actually have to get up, go to the wall, unplug it, plug it in the wall, turn on the TV, and then refind your show again. So just little things like that will make the world of a difference, right? And then five is just remember that consistency isn't the same as perfection, right? There's going to be days where... Um, you're not going to go to bed on time. There's going to be days when you're going to forget about your morning routine, especially when you started uh, at first. There's going to be times where you're not going to show up. Just remember that we just we want to show up more often than we don't. That's a win. If you show up 51% of the time and the other 49 you don't show up, that's a great start. We're already winning. All right? So that is not perfection. That is you like completely ditching half of the week and that is still a win but we need to start somewhere so remember that consistency you want to show up more often that you're not going to show up and eventually that 51 to 49 is going to shift from a 60 to 40 from a 70 to 30 because you're going to start stacking those wins and what will happen over time is you'll notice that your identity will start to shift you will start to realize like, oh, I am a person that is consistent. I am a person that does what they say they're going to do. I'm a person that can stick to things. Maybe right now your belief system is not there yet. And maybe that's why you're struggling with consistency. Maybe you don't believe that when you commit to something that you're actually going to follow through. And so that's why you fail every single time because you already predetermined it before you even started. And so when you start stacking those small wins and start to understand that it's not about perfection, it's just about showing up you start to shift your identity to like, I'm someone that crushes life. I am someone that shows up, that doesn't miss a workout. I'm someone that does their meal prep. I'm someone that stays on track. I'm someone that reads every day. Like once your identity starts to shift and if you have a partner and your partner starts to notice and the people around you start to notice, it'll reinforce that new identity in you. And I promise you it'll be so much easier. It becomes a done deal at this point. So um, I made this last note here. It's all about the mind. It's not about the physical. All the tricks that I just gave you of the morning routine, of scheduling your non-negotiable, those are all things from the physical world to allow you to have more brain power for the mindset challenges that are going to show up. Because at the end of the day, consistency is not a matter of the physical world, it's a matter of the mind. It's the mind that's not, that's stopping you from showing up, right? You're not like physically restrained from going to the gym. Like no one is holding you back. It's your mind that's holding you back. And so all these tools that we're implementing in the physical world is allowing you to keep your level of discipline and decision-making 
um, for the mind so that you have more brain power to make those decisions and to show up because it's all up here. It has nothing to do with everything here. Right. And it's sorry if you're watching on podcasts, I'm gesturing on YouTube, but uh, uh, on YouTube. But yeah, it's it's about it's all about the mind. It's not about the physical world. The physical world is simply there to assist um, your mind. So, guys, I hope this podcast was valuable. I hope that this helps you in um, showing up consistently for the goals that matter to you, whether that is to improve your relationship, get fitter get healthier, improve your body composition, improve your finance, improve your career, spend more time with your kids, whatever it may be. It's all about showing up more often that you don't. It's uh, simply realize that that consistency is not perfection and that it's never going to be perfect. All you want is to show up more often, learn, improve, stack those wins, and I promise you that's going to compound over time. And as it starts to compound over time, your identity will start to shift. And then you'll become the person that just shows up consistently, right? You'll wake up one day and, and everyone's like, oh, you're the person that like work out, works out and eats healthy. And it's just like crushing life. Like you do so much in a day. How do you do all these things? You know, you weren't born that way, right? I, when I get these comments from me, of like how I get so much done in a day, well, I didn't start off that way. I used to be really lazy, but, but I worked through it over time. And now it's become a part of my identity. And now I have no issues doing it. But it took me a long time to get there. And so the main thing I ask you is to be patient. It takes time to decondition your mind, to be how you've been being and to be the new person that you want to be, right? It's not going to happen over time. And if you always expect it to happen over time, you will be discouraged and give up on the process way too early and actually never get there. One thing I realized really early on is the people that win in life are the ones that are patient, that are willing to do the boring work longer than the other people. If you can do the boring work longer than the other people, you will win at whatever goal that is. Same with transformation, right? I've seen so many people jump on like 28 day fast, two week juice cleanses and freaking keto and all these weird things. And they're just trying shortcut after shortcut after shortcut because they just want the immediate result versus the person who took the time to do it properly and is still fit 10 years later. And those people are still doing shortcut after shortcut after shortcut and never got there. One thing, as soon as you realize that it takes so much longer to take shortcuts because you actually never get there. So you're trying the different things like red shiny object syndrome. Um, I have one of my team members share something with me. Um, Not everything that shines is gold, right? A lot of times success is not sexy. You reaching your goal is not a sexy journey. It's not a fun journey. There's going to be boring days going to be days where you don't want to show up. So if you're always reaching for that shiny thing, for that exciting thing, um, chances are you're not going to get there. You need to do the boring work. And the one that can endure the boring work the longest is the one that will win. Find ways to entertain yourself. It's basically like a really long ass road trip and you just have to find a way to entertain yourself, right? You play cards with your siblings, you're gonna watch a movie, you're gonna meditate, you're gonna read, whatever it may be. Find a way to entertain yourself and if you can do that, I promise you, you will win. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope it was valuable. Um, You can let me know either in the comment section below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook. If you're on a podcast, you can leave a review or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. I always love chatting with you guys. If you're interested in some coaching, uh, you know, we've been able to help over 500 vegans from 20 different countries completely transform their health and their bodies from losing from 20 to 80 pounds and just look absolutely incredible and become complete fit vegans. Then there's a link down below for you guys to book your free consultation call. Look forward to chatting with you and I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao.